So graphene is different from graphite simply because the sheets are very, very thin. And scientists have known for a long time that when you make something small in one or more dimensions, that the properties change and in many cases change for the better. So graphene you know, is the strongest material known to man. It's the most electrically conductive material known to man. It's thermally conductive. It, it's got all these wonderful properties. I started working with graphene in about 2006 or 2007. And we knew at that point that graphene was this new wonder material that came from graphite. And we knew that it was being made in very, very small quantities. Graphene was only separated from graphite in 2004. And it, this was done in the University of Manchester, and they did it using sticky tape. So they take a piece of graphite, put sticky tape on it, peel off little bits of, of black stuff, stick them down on a surface, take the tape off again, and sometimes, sometimes they would get graphene on that surface. So we thought that we knew a way to make it in much, much larger quantities. And so what we did was we found that if you put graphite powder that you can buy or you can, you can dig it out of the ground, uh, you put it in certain liquids and you add ultrasonic energy that the energy causes the graphite to separate into sheets of graphene, which are then, they stay in the liquid. And so you get millions and millions of sheets of graphene <laughs> in a liquid that you can then use to process into useful structures like composites or films or coatings. And this is a, a quite a good way of making graphene from graphite. But you can only do that in beakers. You can't do that at very, very large scales. So it's great for the lab, but it will never be used to make industrial scale amounts of graphene. So in 2011, we were approached to scale up this process. Now, we knew that this ultrasonication method was not scalable, so we knew that we were going to have to take, make a new discovery. So what we realized was that in, when you ultrasonicate, the liquid moves around very, very rapidly. And scientifically, you can describe that by something called the shear rate. It's just a, a way of describing how the liquid moves. And we realized very quickly that actually one way of making high shear rates is in kitchen blenders. The thing that you have in your kitchen that you make smoothies out of. It's got a blade that rotates very, very rapidly. And when that blade rotates, it causes the liquid to agitate and to move very, very rapidly. And we realized that perhaps this was part of the reason why ultrasonication worked to turn graphite into graphene. Maybe, maybe not, we didn't know. So what do you do? You do experiments. This is an old graphite pencil. He's putting some graphite in. Actually, that would take too long. So here's some we prepared earlier. It's just powdered graphite. So it goes in the blender. So this is half a liter of water. The water goes in. And then once we make the graphene to stop it sticking together, we need to add some stabilizer. And the stabilizer is fairy liquid. Just a few droplets, a really tiny amount of surfactant. Blender goes on. And we found, literally, within 30 minutes, we found that using these ingredients in a cheap commercial kitchen blender, that we could make far more graphene. On day one, we made far more graphene than we had ever made before using sonication. And so we knew at that point that we had a discovery. And then we spent two years turning that initial discovery into you know, a, a body of scientific work. And this work has been, it was published in Nature Materials, it's been patented, and since then it's been licensed to the firm Thomas Swan that, uh, that approached us in the first place to do the scale-up. So this is now a product. You can buy this graphene.